the Raiders hired Josh McDaniels to be their new head coach. And it was a package deal. The Raiders hired Dave Ziegler as their GM, who was the Patriots director of player personnel, then hired Josh McDaniels as their head coach. And his first in his head coach, eight and eight, his first season, three and nine, his second season, he was fired. I believe he was hired at 32 or 33. And he came out and said that, you know, at that time, wasn't I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready and I didn't know how to forge relationships with players and he feels like he's grown in that aspect. We know he knows a lot about football. We know he is a, a brilliant offensive mind. But with him, it's really about forging relationships and kind of what I said back to what Brian Dable said. Players don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I think with Josh McDaniels, that quote can really resonate with him because he lost his first job because he didn't build meaningful relationships with his players. How good of a hire is this? Do you think it's going to be good for Derek Carr? Do you think the Raiders can now make take that next step? I mean, I know they were a surprise this last season. They made the playoffs. I mean, are may, are they proud to make the playoffs again? Are they going to take the next step? Was this, how good of a hire was this? Yeah, twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two is quite the year if you're a Raiders fan, right? I don't think a lot of people were expecting this offseason to be a new GM and new head coach, but I mean, go back to the race thing. John Gruden got tied up in some stuff that. Uh, you know, forces you to obviously fire him and no longer part of the team. Um, I do like that Ziegler and McDaniels are tied together, right? They have history together with the Patriots. Uh, McDaniels actually gave uh, Ziegler a role in the scouting department when he was head coach in Denver there. So I always like when the head coach and the general manager have connections because it just, it, it seems like the relationship is already there. It's already formed. It's not something new that you have to get into. You're already familiar with each other. Um, he mentioned as well in the press conference, his first year, or his first two years in Denver, got fired in the second season. wasn't great. Went eleven and seventeen. He was responsible for some personnel as well. The uh, Kyle Orton for Jay Cutler trade wasn't great. Trading for trading away Brandon Marshall, Tebow in the first round. He made some mistakes that you look back Kyle on. Kyle was solid. Yeah, but Jay Cutler was definitely better. Uh, not leaves and bounds. He was better. He, he was definitely better. He was better, but he wasn't fit for the team. Regardless, I think he made some personnel choices that weren't in the best suit for the Broncos and it, it does sound like Ziegler is going to have um, the final say there as well they're going to work collaboratively as well collaboratively wow that, that fucked me up um, uh, it's gonna, <laughs> they're going to work together for sure um, but they're also you know McDaniels will have the final say like he did in Denver back in, in 2011 um, it's hard to believe or at least I have to see it before I believe it in terms of the whole building relationship things because I know he was he was really young when he first got the job in Denver and the Patriots the Belichick coaching tree doesn't have the best history in terms of, you know, having successful head coaches, guys being able to build a relationship with players. In 27 seasons, Patriots coaches have won 41% of their games and five fight playoff appearances. So they don't have the best history. But I think more than anything from this Raiders team, I'm not worried about Derek Carr. I see him, I've seen him success, succeed with Jack Del Rio. I've Derek seen Carr. him succeed with Gruden. I don't, Man, Carr's nice. I don't think McDaniels comes in and makes a drastic change. I think if, the Raiders do get a drastic change, it's going to be the personnel side. I think it would be great upgrading the offense and the defense respectively because Carr's already a franchise guy. I think it would be foolish for them to trade him. If you do trade him, you got to trade everybody and just blow it all up because it makes no sense getting off him and then, and then trying to retool this team. Um, they allowed the 12th most sacks. Colton Miller did come along and played really well this season. He was the fifth highest grade tackle according to PFF. You do have a phenomenal tight end, Darren Waller. Hunter Renfro turned into a really good receiver. I still think in this era of football, you need at least one to two more weapons on this offense. Not a big Zay Jones, not a big Brian Edwards guy. I've been talking about Josh Jacobs too. I'm not the biggest fan. I just don't think they have as many explosive players as the other top teams in the AFC and the NFL do. I know Zay Jones and Deshaun Jackson take the top off of defenses, but when you look at explosive guys, like I'm looking, can you go and get a top 10 type receiver or draft guys and, and really put a solid foundation around Derek Carr, who it's been a few years since those Crabtree and Amari Cooper days where he really had two elite weapons and we saw how good of a quarterback he could be. And if they really want to take that next step, it's also going to be upgrading the defensive side of the ball. They allowed the seventh most points this year, third most in 2020, ninth most in 2018, ninth most in 2019 and most in 2018. So it's been like five seasons of them just being a, a terrible defense. That's another area they're going to have to improve. I think McDaniels, I'm still torn on him. I'm not, I don't think it's a home run higher. He wouldn't have been my first choice, I don't think, just because of everything he brings. Not the best first stint. The Patriots coaching history just not being the best. 
But I think Derek Carr can overcome everything. Uh, you know, at this point, I don't think he is. I've seen, I see, he succeeded with Jack Del Rio. You know what I'm like? Fair, and fair, and fair. interim coaches, like there's just been so much chaos that he's gone through that I don't think McDaniels comes in and makes him so much better with the supporting cast or brings him down. I think the Raiders would be about what they are, borderline playoff team, unless they make some moves in the draft and free agency and really bolster this roster. Now, question, is there a reason why Jim Harbaugh didn't decide to take this job? I don't know if there was a specific reason. Um, Especially they needed, if he's they needed, interested in Minnesota. They needed a GM. And Dave Ziegler, I guess, was their first option. And he basically told them that if... Daniels um, is his dream hire. I don't he know. Said. He said That's what he said? Yeah. Well, Dave Ziegler basically said that, well, if you get me, you're going to get McDaniels too. As someone who had McDaniels as their head coach... I, sorry, disrespectful. Sorry. Thank you. That was very rude. <laughs> all right, and that Tebow season was magical. Nice. You can't take that I away. I wasn't from with me. him. You're 100 percent right. Oh my god, it was Fox. You're so right, bro. But he drafted Tim Tebow. He gave us that, and people give him shit for it. But if not for him, we would have never had that season, regardless of whether John Fox was the head coach or not. That being said, that justifies finding the first absolutely, time Tebow. Absolutely, absolutely. Play, one playoff win. <laughs> Listen, Peyton Manning came to town. You get rid of Tebow. It's In that. It's that easy. Yeah. Did it break my heart? Was it a little bit of root of Peyton? Yes. I was. I was a little upset. He could have gone anywhere. He, he decided he wanted to make a home in Denver, and it worked out for him. Ultimately, I'm skeptical because we've seen what happens when he's a head coach, and. As an offensive coordinator with Tom Brady, of course, he's top five almost every single season. And this past season, he had top six in points. He was top six in points. But in terms of yards, he was top 15. He was number 15 exactly. I am skeptical only for the fact that this offense needs work. You mentioned it 100%. I like Josh Jacobs, actually. I'm a little bit more on the Josh Jacobs bandwagon than you are. We had this conversation. Is he top 10? I wouldn't say he's top 10. He's on the cusp. I'd say he's in that 11 to, to 13 range at, at minimum. He can't be lower than that, in my opinion, especially for what he did in their playoff push and in the playoff game against the Bengals. He was great on both the receiving and the rushing end. In terms of Hunter Renfro, he showed that he could be a number one receiver, 1,100 yards, nine touchdowns, freak of nature. And he did a lot of this without – He listen, the statistics are freak of nature-esque. Freak of nature is crazy. Come on. It's freak of nature esque. Eleven hundred and nine touchdowns. If that's freak of nature, what's Cooper Cup? What's Justin Jefferson? No, what's Devontae Adams? If if to if do Hunter it, Renfro to is do it freak of nature. To do it this early. To do it this early. What, what are you talking this about? This year three. And and it, Cooper Cup is in what year? I don't know. Jettas is in year. Jettas is different. Can we just right. say Hunter Renfro is a good, he's a good player? He's a good player. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. All right. All right. Semantics. Good you're right. You're right. Sorry. Freak of nature but, threw me off. Sorry. He's one of the better slots in the NFL, though. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Thank you. I'm I'm sorry. Put me in jail for saying freak of nature when this guy had an unbelievable just, statistical season and was not the number one receiver until I, what week I, five? I, week I just six? I think we, that's reserved for a very small category, freak of nature. Okay, and I agree. That you was see, very you loosely say used. Freak of nature. I, I, first I'm thing agreeing. That comes all right, right. Like all right. Listen, man, I'm agreeing. Okay, You're right. All, You're right. Right. all right. But for his body type, for for him to do what he's done, yeah, no, that's a, freak of nature. It's impressive. It's impressive. And this is with Darren Waller missing a good amount of time, and that's upsetting. We seen, uh, we saw what happened with Rugs. They need to get him another piece. Yeah, they sure. need to get him maybe one to two. I think one for sure. I like Renfro. I like Darren Waller. You get him one more on the outside, then we could really talk offensively. They need to address the offensive line. You can't have Derek Carr running for his life. The fact that they traded away three pieces and, and cut one of them before the season started was a red flag for me and why I was so low on the Raiders as a whole. I think McDaniels has to do a, a good job of building rapport with Derek Carr if he's, if they're going to decide to move on with Derek Carr. I feel like that's essential to the relationship, especially given the fact that Derek Carr backpacked them this season. He put them in this position to be successful. And that's without a doubt. I think he can run an offense. My worry is running a team. Mm-hmm. And defensively, that's where you, you clearly just read out they need their most help. And unless they're addressing that in the offseason and unless they're willing to open their pockets to, to pay some uh, players to come play for them, they they need to they need to find a way to figure that out more so than addressing the offense because Derek Carr is going to have them afloat regardless. Defensively is where the struggle happens, and that is not McDaniel's strong point. He's going to have to put that in the hands of someone else, put that in the hands of the GM to figure out 
But I'm skeptical because he he showed me on Denver he was not the guy. But as an offensive coordinator, he's shown that he could be very effective. This is a wait and see for me. I'm with you. But I'm leaning towards it was a good hire. You know, say what you want about his time in Denver. I think he's openly admitted that he failed. And I think the first step in growth is admitting that you got a problem. And he said he got a problem that he can't connect with players now. For a 32-year-old man, now 44, right, maybe like 43, 44, it's hard for me to believe that you've changed that much of a, that you've changed that much as a person that now you're, oh, you're the most outgoing guy. Hey, yo, Derek Carr, man, how's your fam? How's your this? You know, maybe he's just the same guy now building relationships. I don't know. You know, definitely in New England, it doesn't seem like they have the best of relationships, but there's no doubt McDaniels is a stern coach. He wants things done a certain way. He's had success before with Kyle Orton, who's not a good quarterback. You know, he has he was solid for us. Yeah, because McDaniel's was your OC, and McDaniel's he there was a year he started five and zero with you guys, I believe, right? Five and zero. Let's take a gander. Must have been the first year. It was yeah, first year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I couldn't tell you. He was eight and eight and three and nine. He was five and one, I think, in his first uh, first six games. And then he went on like a slump. I wonder what happened. I can't remember off the top of my head that he only coached 12 games. Yeah, I was like 10, bro. I don't know. But um, <laughs> I was really young, too. Josh McDaniels, is this the first time, at least as a head coach, because in Denver he didn't have it. He has a quarterback. And when you're a head coach and you have the quarterback in place, it makes everything so much easier. You mentioned they have Hunter Renfro, Darren Waller, Josh Jacobs. Those are all really good players. Their offensive line, Colton Miller, is a stone wall. Outside of that, they really suck. Agreed. Alex Otherwood has been a huge disappointment, whether he's at tackle or at guard. He really hasn't been panned out. But now you got Dave Ziegler picking the players. You got Josh McDaniels giving his input. Maybe they can build something here. I don't question the Raiders' commitment to winning. I think they want to win. I think this is an organization that's willing to put their money where their mouth is. I mean, they've moved to Vegas, and ticket prices to get into Allegiant Stadium is freaking expensive as hell so they're definitely committed to winning and they want to build a good football team where mcdaniels will help is that the raiders were 26 in red zone offense this past season mcdaniels and the patriots ranked six this past year with a rookie quarterback and what cost them in the playoff game versus the Bengals? last play red zone I mean, what play? That wasn't even a great play. You know, maybe McDaniels, maybe he calls the play good enough to get Derek Carr to the end zone. And now they they walk off with with a with a game winning touchdown. Maybe that's ha- that happens. I think this was a good hire. It is a wait and see. I'm not like overly ecstatic about it yeah. because you do have the Broncos and the Chiefs and the Chargers in the division, which is always tough. Going to be tough for sure. But I mean, you have the quarterback in place, and that's the most important thing when you get a new job. No doubt about it. Look at the Broncos. We haven't had a quarterback. We've struggled. They've had Derek Carr. They've at least been mediocre for for however many years that they've had him. 